Dear students, welcome to e Patashala. I am Sunil Kumar Onderu, a senior scientist in Animal Biochemistry Division at National Dairy Research Institute, Karnal. Today, I am going to teach you about gel filtration chromatography under the paper Biochemistry. The main objectives of this lecture are to understand the basic concept and principle of gel filtration chromatography, to know the concept of exclusion limit and the gel filtration chromatogram, and to understand the factors affecting the gel filtration chromatogram, sample preparation, and finally, we have to know the applications of gel filtration chromatography. Here we are showing the basic concept and principle of gel filtration chromatography. So, what is gel filtration chromatography? Gel filtration chromatography means it is a separation technique of biomolecules based on the differences in their size or mass when these molecules are passed through a column that is filled with the gel beads containing pores. So, if you see a, a picture in this slide, they can the left hand side you can see that there is a column within this column there are certain beads and these beads contain certain pores. The gel beads with pores are also called as molecular sieve hence another name for gel filtration chromatography is molecular sieving. Like household sieve, small molecules that can enter into the pores of beads and the large molecules cannot enter the pores of the beads. This can be seen in the picture which is present in this slide. In this slide, when you see at that picture, there are three kinds of biomolecules. One is in yellow color, one is in red color, one is in blue color. The red color and blue color molecules they can pass through the uh, pores, but the yellow color molecules they cannot pass through the uh, pores. That is why the yellow color molecules they will go between the beads so they can reach early to the bottom of the column. So, so that is why this is called as molecular sieving. As the column is generally cylindrical in shape, the large molecules not entering the bead will move faster between the beads and come out of the column soon. That is what I explained just now. In this case, the yellow color uh, molecules, they are coming sooner outside of the column because these molecules are not entering inside the bead. On the contrary, the small molecules, they travel through the pores and take more time to come out of the column. That is why they, these small molecules, they will be eluted later outside of the gel filtration, later from the gel filtration chromatography. So far, we have discussed only the uh, what is gel filtration chromatography and also the principles of gel filtration chromatography. Now, in that uh, previous slides, we understood that the molecules which are bigger in size, those molecules will not pass inside the pores of the beads. So, that means some, some molecules are excluded to enter inside the beads that is called as exclusion limit. Here in this slide, we are explaining it in much more better way. In gel filtration chromatography, the pores in a stationary phase allow biomolecules below a particular mass or size. That particular mass or size is called exclusion limit. The molecules over and above that particular mass are excluded from entering into the pores of the beads. For example, in this picture, the red uh, color molecules and also the blue color molecules, they are small in size. That is why they can enter inside the beads. But above the size of red color molecule, they are excluded to enter inside the pores. So, such that is why the, this particular concept is called as exclusion limit and that is why there is another name for gel filtration chromatography that is the size exclusion chromatography.
In this slide, uh, we are showing that the different gels which has the different exclusion limits. For example, the Cephedex G25, in this Cephedex G25, the fractionation range is 1 to 5. That means the molecules which have the molecular weight above 5, those molecules they are excluded to enter inside the beads. That is why the molecules above the uh, molecular weight of 5, they can easily pass through between the beads and can they can elute out of the, the column very soon. So, this is one example of the concept of exclusion limit. Now, we are going to discuss about gel filtration chromatogram. Chromatogram as we have discussed in the previous uh, lectures also, it is the representation of the uh, molecules coming out of the chromatography column and that is a simple a graph present on the uh, any paper or a computer screen. Every peak in this particular graph indicates one set of specific biomolecules. So, here in this picture, we can see that the column is present which is a gel filtration column and we are going to separate three different kinds of molecules. One molecule is represented with the yellow color, one molecule is represented with the red color, another molecule is represented with the blue color and these molecules they are different in their different size. If you observe in this picture, in the second uh, column picture here, you can see that there are three kinds of bands within the column that is the first band at the, from the bottom that is the yellow color band because the molecular weight of that particular uh, yellow color molecules it is bigger than the molecular weight of the red color molecules and the final small molecular size molecules are the blue color molecules. That is why the bigger molecules which are coming moving faster inside the column that is why they are coming out of the column first. As when you see in the third picture the yellow color molecules they are already eluted out of the column that is why there is yellow color peak which you can observe below the third column. And the fourth column you can see that the red color molecules are coming out then the, there is a red color peak. And in the final column you can see that the blue color molecules are coming out that is why we can see the blue color peak. So, what it is explaining here there are three kinds of biomolecules molecules that can be separated from the gel filtration chromatography and those are clearly separated in three different peaks. This is called as gel filtration chromatogram. Why these molecules are separated individually into three different peaks that depends upon the partition coefficient or distribution coefficient of this, these molecules. So, every molecule has a specific distribution coefficient Kd. What does that mean? Kd is a function of an analyte for based upon its molecular size. In this, this is basically a distribution coefficient of an analyte for a particular stationary phase particles in gel filtration chromatography. Because the small molecules they can pass and they can enter inside the beads, they will take more time. The partition coefficient for this, the value of partition coefficient or the distribution coefficient is more for the small molecules. But in the case of larger molecules which cannot enter inside the pores of the beads, so they can pass between the beads, that is why it is uh, partition coefficient or distribution coefficient in case of gel filtration chromatography values that will be low. So, basically these distribution coefficient values they range from 0 to 1. But uh, if it is a very small molecules, the distribution coefficient Kd will be 1. If it is a very large molecules, the distribution coefficient Kd will be 0. When there is an intermediate analytes that the distribution coefficient is ranging between 0 to 1. 
there is a relationship between the distribution coefficient and the retention volume. This relationship is represented in this particular formula. Here we can see that V s equals to k d 1 minus k d 2 multiplied by V i. What does it mean? k d 1 is the distribution coefficient of analyte 1 and k d 2 is the distribution coefficient of analyte 2. 2 and the difference of this if it is multiplied with the volume which is the inner volume of mobile phase within the particle that gives the difference between the elution volumes of two analytes and this is the relationship between the KD and the retention volume in case of gel filtration chromatography. Dear students, so far we understood the basic concept and principle of gel filtration chromatography as well as the concept of exclusion limit and the gel filtration chromatogram. Now we are going to discuss about the factors affecting gel filtration chromatogram, sample preparation and the applications of gel filtration chromatography. Here we are going to discuss about the factors affecting the gel filtration chromatogram. There are 8 factors that are affecting the gel filtration chromatogram. So these factors are number 1 is the sample volume, ratio of sample volume to column volume and column dimension, particle size, particle size distribution, pore size of particles, flow rate and viscosity of sample and buffer. These 8 factors in the coming slides we will discuss one by one. The first factor is sample volume. Large sample volumes allow the overlap of closely spaced peaks in chromatogram. What does it mean? When we keep more sample, when we load more sample in the column, what happens is some of the molecules they are eluted very closely. In that case in chromatogram we will get very closely spaced peaks. But when we use smaller volumes, in that case this problem can be overcome very easily so that we can get higher resolution of the different peaks that means different molecules can be separated with very clearly. Most of the applications uh, in gel filtration chromatography require a maximum of 2 percent sample volume out of the column volume to achieve maximum resolutions. Of course, in some books they have written even 5 percent bed volume. Sometimes the larger volumes are also used in case of gel filtration chromatography especially if the desired peak of interest is fully resolved without any nearby overlapping peaks. Suppose if there are no overlapping peaks and there is no problem for the resolution of our desired molecule then we can use even larger volumes to get the more amount of the purified molecules in a short time. For high resolution fractionation 0.5 to 4 percent sample volumes are preferred. In the previous slide we have seen some example with the 2 percent and there are some books which tells that this is uh, there is a range of 0.5 to 4 percent sample volumes are preferred for high resolution fractionation. For complex samples and analytical applications it is preferred to use 0.5 percent of sample volume. For group separation of molecules, sample volumes of up to 30 percent of total column, volume, uh, column volumes are also applied. So what does it mean? Basically there are different uh, uh, kinds of experiments needs different kinds of sample volumes. Here when we see here for high resolution fractionation we need 0.5 to 4 percent. For example, sample volumes of less than 0.5 percent are usually did not improve the resolution of complex molecules. Hence it is preferred to use 0.5 percent of sample volume for complex samples and analytical applications. On the contrary, for group separation of the molecules, sample volumes of up to 
30% of total column volumes were also applied. So, it depends upon the type of experiment we can think about the column uh, sample volumes. But in general, the sample volume of 0.5 to 4 percent is preferred. Second factor is the ratio of the sample volume to column volume. Column volumes need to be selected based upon the sample volumes to be applied. So, these two are interrelated. That means the column volume is depending upon the sample volume and sample volume is depending upon the column volume. So, larger sample volumes require larger columns to allow the complete equilibration of samples between mobile and stationary phase for preventing the multiple runs of the chromatography. Higher sample volumes to column volume lowers the resolution. That is why we have to keep the lower sample volume to column volume. What does it mean? As we discussed in the previous slide, only 0.5 to 4 percent of the column volume we need to use the sample volume. The third factor is column dimension. The height of the column affects both the resolution and elution time of the gel filtration chromatography. As the column height increases, the resolution also increases. For example, doubling the bed height increases the resolution with a factor which is equivalent to the square root of 2. So, we need sufficient bed height along with low flow rates that will allow the complete diffusion of sample molecules between mobile phase and stationary phase, then we will get a better resolution. The fourth factor is the particle size of stationary phase. Gel filtration column efficiency, especially the resolution can be increased by decreasing the particle size of the column as small molecules allow the maximum equilibration of the sample molecules. However, smaller particles, if you use any stationary phase particle size is very small, what happens is that create a back pressure within the column which will damage the column. So, while using the small particles, it is always advised to decrease the flow rate, that because of that there will be low flow rate. So, that low flow rates increases the length of the chromatographic run time that results into better resolution. The fifth factor that is affecting the gel filtration chromatogram is the particle size distribution. Uniform distribution of particle size allows the uniform flow rate throughout the column. Like in a normal chromatography basics also, the particle size should be uniform throughout the column. If there is not uniform column, it will affect the flow rate. So, columns with high uniformity, for example, with the small sample size facilitate the elution of the molecules with narrow peaks in the column. If there is a variation that results into peak broadening that results into overlapping of the peaks. Pore size of the particles, this is another factor that is affecting the gel filtration chromatogram. The selectivity of the column depends upon the pore size distribution of the particles in gel filtration media. Particles with smaller pore size as we discussed in the previous slide also can efficiently separate the small molecules from the larger molecules. But the pore size of a particles defines the fractionation range as we discussed in the exclusion limit. Here we are discussing again that the pore size of the particle defines the fractionation range and exclusion limit of the sample molecules. The another factor that is affecting the gel filtration chromatogram is the flow rate. So, flow rate is a very important factor that determines the equilibration of the sample between the mobile phase and the stationary phase. Why? Because if it is a fast flow rate, there will not be sufficient time for the equilibration of sample molecules between the mobile phase and the stationary phases. 
when we use the high flow rate there will not be sufficient time for the equilibration of molecules between the stationary phase and the mobile phase that's why we have to use the optimum flow rate for a better resolution like in normal chromatography basics so low flow rates allow the complete diffusion of the sample molecules between the two phases and it will lead to better resolution the last factor that is affecting the gel filtration chromatogram is the viscosity of the sample and buffer. This is very very important factor. Why? The viscosity of sample limits the concentration of the sample applied for the separation in gel filtration chromatography. If it is a highly viscous sample that cause the poor separation of the molecules with irregular flow patterns. So, we have to uh, optimize the viscosity of the sample that can easily pass through the column. So, in addition to that there is another problem for this is viscous samples create back pressure in the column and give broad elution peaks. That is why when we are making the sample we have to understand uh, and we have to measure the viscosity. It, it should not be too viscous or it should not be too thin also. So, there should be an optimum viscous samples we have to prepare for gel filtration chromatography. Here we will discuss about the sample preparations. Sample preparation is one of the crucial steps in gel filtration chromatography. The basic principle of sample preparation is to obtain clear sample without any particulate matter. Why? Clear or clarified samples are very very important because they will help to avoid the blockage in the column and they will help to reduce the need for rigorous washing of the column and these clear samples they will help to extend the life of the chromatography column. Therefore, the samples should be properly clarified before applying to the column to avoid any such risks and for better performance of chromatography. For small volumes of the samples, a syringe tip filter made up of either PVDF membrane or cellulose acetate can be used for clarifying the samples to avoid any particles. The composition of the sample buffer. Sample buffer composition should not affect the stability and activity of the biomolecules and it should not affect the gel filtration media or stationary phase. And, and one other important factor uh, we have to consider while making the sample buffer is the pH. The pH and ionic strength of the sample buffer should be optimum so that the biological molecular conformation and stability will be maintained. Ionic interactions with the matrix are undesirable in case of gel filtration chromatography. Therefore, 0.15 molar sodium chloride can usually be used to avoid such kind of ionic interactions in case of gel filtration chromatography. The buffer that should be used for the filtration, it has to be filtered. Generally, the filters either with 0.45 micromolar filter or 0.22 micromolar filter can be used before applying the samples to the column. So, samples should be subjected to filtration through 0.45 micromolar or 0.22 micromolar filters and this will be helpful not only for the uh, better sample preparation and you will get the clear sample preparation. The buffer should be degassed in vacuum as it can affect the performance of the this particular technique. In addition to the previous slide what we have discussed about uh, the sample buffer composition and the important thing in the sample buffer composition is the solubility of sample. This solubility of sample can be increased basically by using detergents like gonadium hydrochloride or urea in case of sample buffer. These gonadium hydrochloride and urea they will cause denaturation of the proteins of uh, molecules. So, these 
molecule denaturant detergents can be used only in such situation where there is denaturation is required detergents in buffer they will also help to avoid the precipitation of samples and also to maintain the extended configuration to determine the accurate molecular weight in case of gel filtration chromatography so sometimes at the low concentration of detergents we can use in case of gel filtration chromatography concentration and viscosity of sample the ability of gel filtration chromatography to resolve the mixture is independent of the sample concentration it is possible to get the high resolution rates even for the concentrated samples however this particular gel filtration chromatography is dependent upon the viscosity Generally protein samples of concentration up to 70 mg per ml are subjected to chromatography separation in this gel filtration chromatography but viscosity of the sample should be optimum in gel filtration chromatography why because high viscosity can cause unstable separation and irregular flow rates and we have already discussed about this so this can result into increased back pressure and skewness in the peaks that is why we have to make sample with the optimum viscosity and we should not increase the viscosity of sample in gel filtration chromatography sample volume it is one of the crucial factors that can affect the resolution of samples in gel filtration chromatography the volume of the sample should be optimum and within the range of 0.5 to 4% of the column volume generally 2% sample volume out of the column volume results in better resolution let us discuss about the applications of the gel filtration chromatography gel filtration chromatography is majorly useful in four scenarios the first scenario is a purification if you would like to separate any molecules in a purified form either the large molecules or small molecules we can use the gel filtration chromatography for example if you want to separate viruses enzymes hormones antibodies nucleic acids and polysaccharides these are all can be separated by the gel filtration chromatography and another important utilization of gel filtration chromatography like dialysis it can be used even for the desalting so because salt uh, molecules are smaller in size and when we want to separate our bigger molecules from the smaller molecules still like in dialysis uh, we can use gel filtration chromatography for desalting and uh, next uh, similar kind of act Uh, application for the gel filtration chromatography is a solution concentration basically here also we are separating different size of the molecules and make the solution more concentrated the most important one uh, of gel filtration application of gel filtration chromatography is relative molecular mass determination relative molecular mass determination this is the very very important use for the gel filtration chromatography why because uh, we can determine the molecular mass by the standard curve what does it mean we have to take different size of the molecules and separate them in gel filtration chromatography and obtain a standard curve a large molecular size will come sooner out of the column and the small molecules they will take large uh, long time to come out of the column if you see in this um, slide on the right hand side there is a graph here you can observe that the large molecule beta galacto galactosidase and it is taking its molecular size is bigger that is more than 5.5 log uh, relative molecular weight relative molecular size 
this takes very less time that is coming within 12 ml is the retention volume like this the smaller molecule take long time to come out of the column. Once we make this a standard curve if there is any unknown molecule when we run on gel filtration chromatography if we identify the retention volume or retention time and we will match with the standard curve then we can tell that what is the relative molecular mass of that particular molecule. But there are certain assumptions for this identification of relative molecular mass determination. The first assumption is protein is assumed to have a similar shape and of the standards. If the standards we are using the globular proteins we are assuming that our unknown protein is also in the globular in structure. Generally the proteins are assumed in the globular in structure. But when we use axial proteins in that case this gel filtration chromatography will not be much useful because axial proteins even though their uh, molecular mass is uh, bigger they can easily pass through in the pores of the beads of the column that is why in that particular case we cannot use gel filtration chromatography for the relative molecular mass determination. Overall in this lecture we discussed about the basic concept and principle of gel filtration chromatography, concept of exclusion limit and the gel filtration chromatogram, factors affecting gel filtration chromatogram, sample preparation and the applications of gel filtration chromatography. Dear students I hope you enjoyed this lecture for further study please read Principles and Techniques of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology edited by Keith Wilson and John Walker, 6th edition Cambridge University Press in 2005. Physical Biochemistry Principles and Applications edited by Shihan D, 2nd edition Willie and Blackwell Publishers, West Sussex, UK in 2009.